Okay guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you um, a real quick easy way to make a countertop. Um, what we did is we went ahead and marked on two pieces of graph paper that's taped together where we want everything. And then once we did that, then we measured out how far we wanted it to be with the item that's going to go there. So we know the fridge is going here, the dishwasher, the sink, and then counter space, and then the stove will go back over on this side. All right, so once we did that, we determined how wide everything was going to be. Then we cut it out of a piece of 1 8 inch board, which looks like this. And then after that, we went ahead and got some sticky back floor tile that had a small grain in it that could resemble granite. And now we're going to apply it and we'll show you how to do that. Something ain't right here. Okay. <laughs> what the hell did you do? All right. So make sure you have the front even and the back even. Yeah, the easiest way to do this to peel part of it back so you get it started where you want it. like a regular floor tile and then going to stick. See? Put it on there, is that right? Which way are we going? Yeah, that's right. Make sure you're keeping it held still from where you're at so you don't lose your spot. Your fingers are in my way. Now that you have it even, you're going to attach it. Now the front is where you want to the main part where you're going to have it even in the front because you're going to add a piece to the front, correct? Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to add a piece to the front if you don't want to, but I do. Um, what I did is I routed out a piece of thin molding, which was just a very, very thin piece of wood, and um, I made this decorative trim with it. This is what it looks like when you buy it in the store. It's just a regular old little square board, one eighth by one eighth. I put it in the routing bit and I routed out the one corner of it. I'm not sure how clear you can see that, but. See if I can there. zoom in. There you go. Now you can see it a little bit better. As opposed to the square. This is what it looks like before you route it. This is what it looks like after you route it. It just gives it a little bit of contour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this around the front of No, it's going to go around the front. Like this. The wider part going at the top. And then it'll just give it a little bit of an angle and then it'll look like that when we have it completely on there. And what you'll do is cut the corner where it meets here and over there at a 45. And then when it meets here, if you're not running it into anything else, you're going to have to cut 45 and 45 again here and here. But ours is going to be running into something 
so we're going to box it right there and stop it at the front and just do a straight cut. So we're only going to be doing a 45 there. Okay, so now once you have it on there, you're going to take a hammer and you're going to tap it so that you can attach the glue. The shelf stick. But we're not going to be walking on this to make it stick any better. At least I don't plan on walking on it. <laughs> So by tapping it, it actually helps it adhere better. Okay, to attach this, we're going to try it with some crazy glue. We've never tried to attach wood like this with crazy glue before, but since this is so thin, um, there's not too many things that we can put on here that will hold it to this tile itself. If this does not work, then we will put um, E6000 glue on here, and E6000 glue will work. But E6000 is very thick, so um, I'm afraid that I'm going to put too much and make it messy, so I'm going to try the crazy glue first. So we applied it here, and now we're going to put it right there. Yeah, I'm going to put some on here because it's going to soak in. Crazy glue will stick to your finger, so be careful if you use it. Now he's blowing on it for a second to try and make it a little tacky. Now you want to make sure that you're making it even with the top edge of this tile. If it's not even with the top edge, then there's no point in putting it on there. And it doesn't matter that you see the bottom edge coming through because that's going to look like it's part of the um, cabinet when we're done. Okay, so it should look like that. And make sure it's flush right along there. Alright, and then you want to do the same thing with the other piece here. And it should be cut at a 45 right here in the middle so that when you have it joined, it goes together accurately. Alright, so once you have it on there, um, we took some rubber bands and we went ahead and attached them to it. And these rubber bands are pretty large. I don't even know. They're crazy size. It's a bag of assorted ones, but... but they're all they, really big. They're all like jumbo. So we just wrapped them three times around our hand and then tied them in a knot to make them as tight as we needed it. That way we can have it pull it until it dries. If you're working with crazy glue, it's always good to have a rag handy because the crazy glue won't stick to the rag. Okay, so on the very bottom, we applied with the fine applicator. And this is just a um, contact solution drop we cleaned out and filled with glue. But they sell them with a really fine tip point in the hobby section that you can use. Put some glue in it and then apply it to the bottom and then wipe it off of the bottom so that when you um, have it, it's not globbed up and it's not messy. Let it sit for a couple hours or whatever before you do anything else to make sure all the glue is hardened and dry. And then you can use it for the next part. Okay, so if you're going to be making where it's going to go square around it, it's best to take and tape masking tape on the front side and then lay it flat to put your trim around otherwise you'll never get your angles right that way you have something to hold on to it while you're doing it 
Okay guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to follow Dollhouse Manager Madness and Tutorials.com. Also, check us out on Facebook, Dollhouse Manager Madness and Tutorials, and on YouTube. Like and subscribe to the channel because we post videos all the time. And leave a comment, question, or suggestion because we love hearing from you. And if you like Pinterest, we have tons of pens on there as well under Laurie Holden Heisler. Alright, thanks a lot. Have a great day.